Jenna got, she also made it into The Onion, right? Um, and you know you've really made it into mainstream media when you become at The Onion or me, right? Um, I just, I, I will have to laugh, otherwise you would just cry. Um, and then this information also filtered into policy dialogues, right? She wasn't focusing on policy at this point, but the media attention caught the attention of policymakers. And that just illustrates the connection between media and policy dialogues and how they work together in terms of discourse. So Jenna worked with Compass and OSHA Conservancy and some other NGOs to continue amplifying her message. Um, and marine plastics have been on the radar of Congress for a while because of uh, OC's, um, OSHA Conservancy's longstanding work on it. Um, but Jenna's science has really been the centerpiece of that. Um, it takes deliberate effort, but scientists, is just a good example of how scientists can work with NGOs and navigate that advocacy line, which we won't talk about today, but Compass does do a lot of work around that. Um, and you can learn how to navigate that advocacy line in a way that makes you comfortable. Um, and so this is just a picture of Jenna at a policy briefing that she did on Capitol Hill. And this all culminated in Jenna testifying before Congress um, in a hearing of the Senate Envir Environment and Public Works Subcommittee. Um, in 2016 on marine debris and wildlife. And so her policy engagement, um, along with a lot of work by the NGOs, uh, OSHA Conservancy in particular, helped drive the eventual passage of the Save Our Seas Act in uh, 2018. And then of course, what happens when there is movement on an issue in the policy front? It shows back up in media, right? So here's another great clip of Christopher Joyce interviewing Jenna in 2018. Plastic is both a wonder of modern technology and also one of the major environmental problems of our time. Plastic garbage is turning up everywhere. There are these massive floating garbage patches in the oceans. There are tiny pieces of plastic that end up in the food chain, including in our food. And here's Christopher Joyce has the story of a woman who's telling the world how much plastic waste is out there and where it's coming from. I met Jenna Jambeck at her office at the University of Georgia for an interview. I was not expecting homework. So what we're going to do for the next 24 hours is re to record everything that you touch that is plastic. I'm touching something right now. Mm -hmm. So let's write it down. My microphone holder. It's plastic. Yep. And your, this. And the tape recorder? No, the tape recorder. A plastic ID card. The zipper on my bag. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that was maybe uh, three minutes. Oh, this is going to be a long day. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Great. So the, the, the story is quite long, right? This was a really long form um, uh, audio piece. Um, and at the end of it, I think that the number that uh, Christopher Joyce had was like 57 or something. So, um, you know, what, what did she do there that made that so interesting? She directly related it to his life and how it fits into his daily life. And what he was doing in that moment, right? And that's something that then you as a person are like, oh my God, this is plastic. This is plastic. This is plastic. Everything around you is plastic. And so you in that moment as the listener are realizing how much plastic is around you, right? So she made it really tangible. She made it really relatable. Yeah. So, um, one thing, again, that this uh, example does is it makes the distinction between the message box and messages, right? Um, again, the message box is a tool to help you get to your messages. But what you might actually say is you're not actually going to say everything that's written down there, right? And, and you might not say actually very little of what's written down there, but it's there to help you sort through what is the core of what you want to get across to someone. So. Eventually, once you get your message box down, then you start figuring out your messages, right? How you actually want to phrase things. So, and you think of that as kind of cracking the door open, right? Um, you want to get people interested in what you have to say so that they'll want to know more, right? So that they'll ask you questions. Um, and you don't want them to, to be overwhelmed or run away. So, 
Your messages, again, should be your take-home ideas, um, the core of what you're trying to get across. Um, they should be simple, but not simplistic, right? You don't have to dumb down. Your audience isn't dumb, they just don't know as much as you do. Um, and uh, as we talked about it, keep it to three major points. Avoid jargon and acronyms. Um, and these are the things that as you dive into your first round of the message box, um, to really keep in mind. So um, we'll do two rounds of message box work. So we're gonna spend the next, probably a little bit less than 10 minutes on solo work time. You have the message box worksheet with you. Um, so you'll spend some time with that, thinking through, you know, thinking through your message box, and then kind of starting to think about your take home messages. How do you say this in a way that's simple, but not simplistic? Um, and then making sure that you're avoiding jargon and three to four points. And then we're gonna have you pair up with someone and then you'll share with them and give feedback. Um, and when we do that, I'll talk about what your feedback is. So you have probably about nine minutes 